So welcome to the Code Combat Workshop. I'm Jaden. So firstly, what we're gonna have is the move method and the attack method, other methods, and then the three different levels, 17, 22, and 41. Okay, so firstly for the move method, right? There are four basic methods, kill dot move up, kill dot move down, move right and left. So yeah, basically all these y'all can read. Right, so in the, in the game, right, there are many instances that you want to move left twice, so that you want to move four blocks. So you will want to, so you may use here to move left twice, but then we want to simplify the code. So you will want to use this here to move left, then two in the bracket. This will allow the hero to move left by four blocks. Then another method is the hero dot move x y, where this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate, and then the hero will move to these coordinates up, right? So next we have the attack method. So the hero dot attack, then enemy. The hero attack enemy once, and from the game you will find out that you will need for a normal enemy you will need two times of this code. So you will use hero dot attack enemy then hero dot attack enemy again. Then for another attack method is kill the attack, and then you pass in the name of the target. And then next is the we use a while loop to find an attack enemy. So while true, right? We let that this enemy variable be kill the finders enemy, which means that the hero will find the nearest enemy and then let that be that variable. Then we heal the attack enemy. So basically, whenever there's an enemy, the hero will attack the enemy. Yeah. So next, what we have is build defense. So here the build X Y, then we put in this fence here. So it's, it shows that we want to build the fence. Then remember to remember to have this open with the commas. Then we put the X coordinates here. Then the Y coordinates here. Then the hero will build the fence at those coordinates up. So basically, how do we find these coordinates? We move our mouse, and then you'll just you'll find out that uh you put it at where you want to. Oh, right, and then you just see these x and y coordinates up. Then you just put inside here, then yeah, you get to build a fence. All right, next type of defense is fire trap. So, same thing instead of putting the fence, now we put fire trap and then we put the x coordinates and the y coordinates. Then here we'll just build a fire trap at those coordinates also, which is what you can see here. All right, next is the cleave method. So, this method over here it checks if the cleave attack is ready because the cliff attack will go to cool down for a short period after every use. So this checks if the hero has the cliff ready. And after that, after you check if the hero has the cliff ready, right, you need to use it in hero.cliff enemy. So it's basically like hero.attack enemy, but instead of attack now it's cliff. So the hero will cliff the target which has been assigned to the variable enemy. Another type is the hero.cliff when you pass in the name of the target. It's basically like the hero dot attack uh methods are. yeah. So next, what we have is the methods for pet. So the pet dot fetch, then you put in then item right. The pet will bring the item to the hero. Then next is the pet dot find nearest enemy and pet dot find nearest item. This is just like the hero's uh methods where you can use hero dot find nearest enemy, and then yeah. So for pet, it's also the same thing. So the pet will find the nearest enemy or find the nearest item. Next is the pet dot move x y. Then is the x coordinates and y coordinates just like the heroes uh, method. So the pet will just go to these coordinates also. Uh. Next is the pet dot say. Then you put the message here, right? Like what the pet wants to say, uh. Then you put in the inverted and open inverted commas, right? And the pet will say those message, uh. The next one is the pet dot trick, which is just for entertainment. So the pet will perform a dance, uh. yeah. Then another one is the pet dot on where you have the event, then you have a function. So the pet does the function when that event is triggered. So common events include spawn or when they hear something like that. Then after that, so basically for an example, when an item spawn, then the pet will, will like say mail or something. Yeah. All right, next, Brian. Wait, sorry. Okay, hi guys. So uh, I will bring you through uh, the three different levels. 
Uh, so we'll start with level 17. So this level requires you to come up with a, with a loop that uh, independently. So uh, it, within the loop, it allows, you need to ask the character to either like move forward or move up or move down and attack. So you are supposed to look at the map and come up with a pattern. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, as you can see, this uh, is a picture of the map uh, level 17. Uh. So you start from this green circle you can see on the screen here. So you move down, hero dot move down two means you move down two steps and then you move up again because you collected that crystal and then you move right to collect the other crystal. And then you move up and then hero dot find nearest enemy. So you, you will attack the, the, the enemy and then uh, yeah, and then the whole thing repeats because the if you can see the picture, the map is divided into two, two equal bits. So you just need to loop it, the uh loop the what you have done in the first part for the second part, and you will reach the end. All right, next slide, please. So level twenty two is uh you need to check whether the enemy is if your your character is near an enemy. So uh, if Cliff is ready, then you attack the enemy with Cliff, or else you use a basic attack. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so for this, uh, so you also will use a while loop. So you use a hero dot find nearest enemy. So this returns a boolean, which is stored in uh, the variable called enemy. So if enemy is like, if it's true or if it's false. So if it's, if it's true, it will run the following code. So distance equals to hero dot distance to enemy. So distance is how close your enemy is to your character. If your distance is less than five, uh, then then you check whether Cliff, your ability is, is um, ready or not. If it's ready, then you, you try to kill the enemy using Cliff or else you attack the enemy. Yeah, and then this will loop continuously until like no more uh, enemies left. Next slide, please. Uh, so as what Jaden said just now, you can use the patch, pet dot fetch method to send your pet to fetch a potion for you. And then we also can use a while loop to shorten the code. Next slide, please. Uh, so you de we define, uh, we want to make use of uh, a function because we want to call pet.on. So you need to pass in a function when the pet spawn. So the function is called go fetch and it includes a while loop. And within that while loop, it checks whether hero.find nearest item if there is a potion near the character. So again, potion is a Boolean value. So if true, the pet will fetch the potion. If it's false, then nothing happens. So when you call pet.on spawn go fetch, it means that if the once the pet spawn, the function will activate and then the pet will carry out the code that you wrote in go fetch. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, so we have come to the end. Uh, I finished the three levels. Uh, do any of the participants want to unmute and ask any questions? Uh, or you can type it in the chat box if you guys are unclear of anything that, that me or Jay don't went through. Uh, so I think there are no questions. Uh, we will pass it on to the next presenter. Thank you.
Wait, I will share the next live demo. Okay, so for this challenge, right, our aim is to collect all the gems on the map, like all those crystals. And at the end of the day, the hero needs to move to the X mark in order to like finish the mission. Yeah, however, the requirement for this challenge is to write in no more than five statements. In order to do this, right, writing a loop is crucial, crucial for us to solve this challenge. And the key for writing a loop to complete this level is to find out the pattern for the path which the hero needs to walk. Then from the pattern, we can cut short the repetitive parts using a while loop. A while loop runs as long as the condition is true. And if the condition is always true, the while loop will run forever, which helps us to complete the task. Okay, so now we can analyze this level and find the pattern. And I know it's kind of hard to like find out the pattern by yourself. So in this case, we can use a, we can write pass, then we run. Then we can see a mouse on the map, which run in this direction. It starts from here. Then you go to the right, down, left, and up. In this case, right, we can see that if we go to the position of the mouse, then we can follow the path of the mouse. Then we go up again, right, down, left, up, right, down, left, up. And eventually we can finish this level by looping through the steps that the mouse took. Yeah. Okay, so now we can start our code. In order to write the loop, we have to use while true. And remember the true, right? Have to the T have to be capitalized as this is the syntax for Python and is case sensitive. So we write while true. Then in order to follow the path of the mouse, we have to go up first. So we write hero.move up. And it's like by two blocks. So we have to pass a two inside. After which, right, the mouth go to the right. So we write hero.move right. And it's also by two blocks, as you can see from here. So we also have to pass the two inside. Then after we reach this point, we go down and left. So we will write hero.move down, hero.move left. And at this point, you might want to go up and, but in this case, right, we have already write hero.move out at the start. So if you write hero.move up at the end again, you might cause the code to like repeat again, which will be wrong. And I can demonstrate this to you, but this is a wrong example. So you will go up, then you go to the right at this code say, then you go down, left, and you go up. And after you go up, right, you cannot, you find that you will go back to the hero.move up again, and the hero cannot go up anymore because you are repeating the loop, right? So this is wrong. Okay, now we will not run that. We will run the correct code by which the hero go with the path of the mouse and it, it repeats it itself, going right again, down, left, and up. Yeah, as you can see in this way, right, the hero can look through the whole code correctly and finish the quest. And if you wonder why we start with hero.move up, right, we have to get the hero go to the position of the mouse first in order to go through the path. So let's say if the mouse start from position B, then go to C, D, A, B. We start from A, then we go for A, B, C, D. Yeah, so it's kind of different from the path that the mouth demonstrate for us. Yeah. Okay, next speaker. Uh, okay, let me share my screen. Uh, okay, so this level is a continuation to the level 22, which Brian has presented just now. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly run through the um, the previous code. Um, so he explained that using a we use a while true loop to uh, to find the nearest enemy. 
and then if the enemy is present, we will check the distance between the enemy and the hero. And uh, if the enemy is close enough, which is uh, less than 5 in this case, then we will launch attack on the enemy. Um, what Brian previously did is that uh, uh, he put an if statement within an if statement, which is uh, a B. Um, it makes the code a bit unorganized. So uh, instead of putting an if statement within an if, if statement, we can create a, a function. Yeah, so um, to do that, we will just uh, define a function called cliff or attack. So um, now we I will, I will try to type out the code. Uh, so we will start off by uh, checking that if the cliff, uh, cliff attack is ready. So I'm just going to uh, say if hero is ready, and then we check the action cliff is ready or not. So if it is, then the hero will um, just launch the cliff attack. And we'll pass in the target. Or else, uh, we'll switch back to the basic attack function, which is just simply attack. OK, so um, so if after we put uh, these lines of code within this function, we'll just call it uh, at the end of the loop. I'm just going to run through the uh, code. So firstly, uh, you use cliff attack. Then after that, we'll switch back to basic attack. Then uh, his cliff attack will be ready again. So uh, you'll use it the, the cliff, cliff attack again. Then uh, the loop will just repeat itself. Yeah, any, is there any question? Okay, uh, if not, then I'll pass the time to the next presenter. Thank you. Okay, hi, I'm Lucas. So now I'll share my screen. Okay, just for info, I'll be doing the... Give me one moment. Huh? I'll be doing the level on close crossroads, which is like guarding the entrances to the village. So just give me a moment to share my screen. Um, so I, hope you, I think... Okay, can you all see my level here? Okay, uh, so this is quite a unique level because... There's this special task. You have four entrances to this small village. You're supposed to guard your these villagers. And if they're you're supposed to how you're gonna do that is actually you're gonna patrol this village. There are four entrances, so you go to the bottom, the left, the up, and then the right. And then you want to do it again. Bottom, left, up, right, non-stop. Like you just keep going until this level is completed. And then whenever you go to an entrance, you want to check, do you see any enemy close to you? If you do, right, if you're at the bottom or top entrances, you'll build a fire trap to kill the enemy. However, if you're patrolling at the left and right entrances, you will want to build a fence instead. So normally, right, the first thing you'll think of maybe uh, if you are new to coding, you might think of writing it out manually, like with a very long piece of code. So maybe you'll say, okay, I'll go to this spot here, like hero the move to this spot. Then I'll check if there's any enemy, I'll build a fire trap. Then after that, I'll go to the next spot. If there's any enemy, I'll build a fence. I'll go to the next spot, fire trap, if there's an enemy, next spot, enemy, they'll build a fence. Then I write again, I'll go to the bottom, I'll check, and I'll build. Then left, check, build. And you get, a, you get an idea. It's just going to take too long. So there are two ways, I mean, there are two important things that you can use to help you to overcome this challenge. So one thing is a while true loop which you should have learned earlier. So basically, you realize that you're going from, from to this 4x marks, right, in this uh, clockwise order. You go in one round, then you go in another round again. So you just need to define within a while true loop, right? Uh, how you walk one round. Then you'll repeat this many, many rounds. Lah. So you just go, this code just says, okay, we'll call this function. Yeah. So in, another thing that you realize that is that instead of writing in this loop, right? Okay, I go to this spot, I check and I build. I go to the next spot, check and build. You realize that all of them have a very similar uh, thing that you're supposed to do. And you go to the particular X and Y coordinate, check for enemy and build. Build fire trap or build fence, it depends on which spot you're at. So you can just write one generic function. 
So that later, right, you can just call the function, just write the name of the function and you specify what you want to build and where's the place. Then that's so simple. It's much easier. You just write, you write the full function once, which I'll show you. And then next time when you use it, you just need to call the name. So what you have to do for function, you just, it's just a syntax, right, which is just like uh, technical stuff. You just need to write define. Then you write the name of your function. If it is really written for you, like maybe build something. This function takes in three inputs. Your type to build, which you must specify. Like in this case, you put this function, you put fire trap. So in this case, your type to build will be fire trap. Then you put your x and y coordinates, which in this case, 40 and 20, that kind of thing. Uh. So it depends on what the user writes. It's just a generic variable that you can change. So the hero will first move to these coordinates that the user gives, x and y. Then after that, I'll do something, which is enemy equals to hero dot find nearest enemy. So what, what this will do, right, is that, sorry about that. This hero that will find nearest enemy just sees that if there's an enemy within like your site, like, where you can see an enemy. If there is, right, I'll assign this enemy to this, this like name tag or this name, like, okay, whatever you call it. I just call it enemy, like, in this case. It can be A, B, or C, or whatever. It's just something I use to call this thing. So I don't need to keep writing this many times. Okay, then I check if this enemy exists, then what I'll do is that I will build something. Sorry about that. Build X, Y. Okay, what will I build? It depends. It can be a fence or a fire trap. But the user will say that, ma. So I'll just put type to build. Because this type to build can either be fire trap or fence, depending on what the user writes. Then why will I build it? It's at the X and Y coordinates that the user gives me. And that's it. That's all for your function. So if I run this, you'll see this happening. Yeah, so I see an enemy, I'll build a fire trap. I don't see an enemy, I'll just move on. Yeah. Let's see an enemy here, I'll build a fence. Yeah, so the general idea is that what this what the computer will do is it'll go through the while through loop. So it will it will do maybe build something at this uh, build fire trap at this 40 and 20 mark, right? So this function called for this specific uh, details uh, they give it. So in this case, you're, you're just like putting this thing inside here. But uh, it, type the build is replaced with fire trap. The X and Y is 40 and 20. La. So I just move to 40, 20. If there's an enemy, I'll build fire trap at this coordinate is 40, 20. Then after that, I'll call the function again for another, for another object to build fence and at a different coordinate, which is here. So what this will do is it's just referring to the same function. In this, except in this case, the x and y is 26, 34. So I'll move to 26, 34. I'll find an enemy. If there's any enemy, I'll build fence at 26, 34. And that's it. Then it just goes to the next one, the next one, then it'll do it again from start to end for this while through loop. So you realize that this function can simplify things a lot. And your loop also works wonders. Lah. So, OK, do you have any questions? If you have any questions, you can just like um how to say, you can raise your hand or you can write something in the chat. Also, just now I saw someone had a question about level five, right? In CS one, maybe I can just quickly address that also. Okay, I'll give me one moment. Huh? Okay, let me share my screen for that level five. Huh? hold on. Okay, so as you can see, okay, this is one way you can do it. Maybe if your concern is about doing it in seven lines of code, the, the trick right, is that when you want to attack this enemy Brad, you do not move up to this spot. You just move here, you move in this line, you stop here, and you attack him. He'll naturally walk to you, and you'll walk to him. You'll kill him, you'll come back to this spot. Then you move again. So it's like, he wrote a move right to this point. Then you attack this guy without moving up, without without writing the code to walk up there. You just, yeah, you just say they want to attack him. You naturally walk to him by yourself, kill him, and you'll come back to your original spot. Then you just need to move right again. Then after that, sorry about that. Um, after that, you have to say you attack track because this track will naturally walk to you also. So you don't need to purposely walk to him. Man. You don't need to write anything of that sort. You just need to write attack him. 
After you attack him twice, then you move right twice to the entrance. That's it. So it's just seven eyes of hope. Thanks. Hope that solves your query. Okay, so now I'll pass the time on to the next uh the next section. The next group. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so before I begin, right, allow me to introduce uh, what exactly Code Combat is again. So Code Combat is an educational video game for learning software programming concepts and languages. And you can learn languages like JavaScript, Python, HTML, and CoffeeScript, as well as learning the fundamentals of computer science. So if you if you can see on my screen here, if you come to the Code Combat site, you can log in to the top right corner. And after that, navigate your way down to the Code Combat uh, area down here, right? Just click go to my courses. After that, you can choose what levels to play and essentially progress to your levels that we've assigned to you. Okay, all right, thanks. So now moving on to our presentation today. Uh, welcome to our Code Combat Playbook and me, Brandon. Srini and Tristan will be pre presenting to you these slides today. So in Code Combat, there are four arenas, the Waka Mall, Blazing Battle, Infinite Inferno, and Power Peak. And moving on, we present to you the first arena, Waka Mall. So welcome to Waka Mall. You can, in here, you can battle your friends, coworkers, and classmates in this all-out brawl throughout the Kith Guard dungeons, as mentioned by the first group. And the objective of this arena is to navigate through the maze and collect gems, to break out your allies, summon more units, and evade the enemy's advances, and to eventually defeat the enemy player. As you can see on this photo on the slides, uh, there are various elements to the game. You can walk over gems to collect, and, to collect them and get coins. You can use these coins to submit units with the say command. You can break down doors with the attack command and the letter of the door with the letter of the door as a parameter to free your allies. And the final goal of this arena is to kill the opponent's main character. So this will be a default code that you'll be greeted with when you first enter the arena. Uh, you can take a look now. The codes in this arena are the easiest of the four arenas because uh, they simply involve how to move the ability to attack enemies, and the ability to call on allies. Moving on, right? This table shows the amount of coins that each type of gem provides when it is collected on the map. And these coins that the gems give can be used to summon certain units, which you will soon see in, a, in another table. On top of that, there is a haste potion in the center of the map that can be obtained by breaking either door E or F. And this speed potion will double the movement speed of the hero that takes it. So now, as mentioned before, uh, this is the unit stats table for Waka Mall. Their names, along with their HP, speed, damage, and range and cost info are all here. And remember to choose your units best, like YC, so as to best benefit your team. Uh, I'll give you some time to look at the unit stats now. Right, as a further distinction, red units are only obtainable when playing on the human team, while blue units are only obtainable when playing on the ogre team. And the last two units that are highlighted in yellow, the Paladin and the Brawler, cannot be summoned and must be released from their respective cages. Okay, moving on, we present to you the second arena of Blazing Battle. Uh, Blazing Battle is a tower defense game where you build towers and send enemies at the opponent with the goal of surviving longer than the opponent. This arena is more difficult than the previous arena and you have to survive longer than your opponent by using clever techniques, mind blocking algorithms and unimaginable methods. Uh, so here's a default code that you'll see when you start the game. And below we have attached, we have typed out the uh, three most important codes that you'll need for the game. So hero.build tower allows you to construct your own towers to defend against an, uh, uh, oncoming enemies. Hero.get enemy towers allows you to understand what uh, units your enemy has, right? And here dot set is what towers your enemy has. And here dot set mixed wave types allows you to capitalize on your enemy's weaknesses to defeat them. Here's a table with the enemy stats that your towers will be faced with when playing the game. And these units will be determined by your enemies. So remember to play wisely. The choose enemy, you can choose enemies for the next wave with the with the 
quoted above, hero dot set next wave types. And each player can choose up to five enemies for a next wave. And if you're not specified, the enemies will be chosen at random. Moving on, uh, here are the towers that you'll be using to defend yourself against the enemy, while also buying time to devise strategies to attack them. Uh, these towers carry cater to different types of enemies, so pick them carefully as well. The towers are situation-based. Since there are units that are resistant to different types of damage, it would be good to have the towers of different types so that all enemies can be taken down. For, in for inaccurate towers, such as the cannon and the catapult, placing guards down near them could slow the enemies so that the towers will be able to hit them and do their high damage. To upgrade the towers, build the same tower again in the same location to increase the tower's stats. So here are some suggested strategies to help you get off the ground. You can use a while loop to consistently set enemies every wave. This helps you avoid having to hard code all the, all the, all the towers meant to be built and upgrade. And you can also use the hero.on wave handler function and create a function to choose enemies every single wave. Uh, the unit bubble bombs are also one of the most effective units in the game because while they may have low health, only the firewall tower can reliably deal with them because even the guards, firebolts, and force bolts may target other enemies instead and miss the robo bombs. Upon death, they also explode and can kill the enemy's champion instantly if the champion is in that area, which can actually give you quite a big advantage in, in terms of attacking the enemy. And if the enemy does not have a firewall at the start, choosing robo bombs could also often lead to early victories. Finally, keep in mind that when choosing enemies, the enemy also comes to your side, hence one of the first towers you build should always be a firewall. As mentioned before, right? While guards are not a very reliable form of damage, they can serve, uh, they still serve a purpose by delaying the enemies so that more damage from other towers can be done to them. So therefore, guards should actually be placed near high damage or low accuracy towers to get the best value out of them. Now I will be passing my time on to Tristan, who will be telling you about the inf infinite inferno arena. So, so guys, um, the Beta Arena is the Infinite uh, Inferno, and the objectives of this arena are to battle each other by choosing champions, attack enemy forces and push towards their base while also defending your own. The ultimate goal is to, it should be to destroy the enemy base. Uh, as there are a lot of codes for this arena, um, I'll be explaining to you the, the more complicated ones uh, in, in, in the up upcoming slides. Uh, there are two elements to attack in this game. These are units and champions, respectively. Once the game starts, every wave, which is around 5 seconds, players will get 500 points to summon units to attack their opponent. The stats of the units are shown in the first table, with their respective names, health, speed, damage per second, and cost. Uh, I'll give you some time to... Do you have to write it down or just, just note it down? Uh? Uh, give everyone like one minute, something. Okay. Um, using the we are moving on. Um, uh, using the sample lines of. Yeah, using these sample lines of code shown, uh, you can decide on which units to summon. For example, like the ogre is in lane zero, that kind of thing. Yeah, and next, um, the second element is the usage of champions. Okay, next. Yeah, second element is the usage of champions. Once the game starts, players can, can select specific champions that they want to summon. The champion units does not cost anything to summon but it can only be a maximum of three on the map at one time. Upon death, it takes about seven seconds before they can be resummoned. So pick your champions wisely. Uh. Uh, next, uh, players can decide on which champion they want to summon through the second function. To decide which champion to spawn, they can make changes to the list or change the index in the return statement. The player also has full control over their champions and is able to direct them individually or collectively. In order to command champions separately, take a look at line 17 of the sample code, which shows the variable that they can modify to control them separately. Keep in mind that the command and control of champions is the most key factor to achieving victory. So 
take a good look at this, take it down, jot it down or something. I pay attention to it, use it well. Next, um, yeah, give some time to I take a picture if you need to screenshot. Uh, okay, moving on. Next slide. Um, every time you, uh, your army is able to destroy an enemy tower or knock out an enemy champion, upgrade points are given to you. Every 50 seconds, you will be able to choose what to upgrade with the following function. Change the list to decide on which upgrades to choose or change the index in the return statement to decide which upgrade to choose. Yeah, in this case, yeah. And pick uh. so pick YC uh. and last but not least here are some strategies firstly range champion special attacks they are quite a long range and high damage hence it may be worth using a range champion to target the enemy base directly ignoring the other troops in the lane which is like focusing on your objective uh, instead of the distractions next Make sure to efficiently command the champions to target the higher priority enemies, power, enemy champion, and crystal. That kind of thing, like playing objective uh, instead of playing for just wiping out the enemy, wiping out the enemy's troops. Uh. So yeah, that's about it uh, about for the strategy. And good luck with if not arena. Yeah. Yeah, now I'll be passing it on to Shuni, which is for uh, kind of present on Power Pit. Uh, thank you, Tristan. Last but not least, we have Power Pit, the fourth arena. Objectives of this arena are to command your pet to gain buffs from the mountain power disc and fight off hordes of munchkins. You have many power ups to choose from, so choose wisely. This is the default code you will see when you enter the arena. Uh, moving on, uh, I'll be sharing with you the hero power-ups. These are the power-ups that are on the lower part of the screen. You can only use one before the battle begins, and you may get a chance to use another every 30 seconds if you survive. The first hero power-up is the damage all power-up, which is represented by the fireball icon. This power-up immediately deals 100 damage to all enemies on screen, including the enemy troops on the opponent's side, except the opposing player. You may want to wait to use this if you are in a crunch. The next one is the Summon Attacker's power-up with the blue 10 icon. This summons a group of attacking fight fighters to your opponent's side of the screen, consisting of two scouts and one thrower. More information about unit types will be shared again later. Represented by the red and white 10 icon is the Summon Plate Balance Team Power Up. This summons some defensive warriors and some aggressive warriors. The defenders will be posted on your side of the screen, with the attackers on the other. For the red team, this means one soldier, one scout, one thrower, and one archer. And for the blue team, it is one soldier and one two scouts. Next, we have the Summon Defender's power up, represented by the white 10 icon. This summons warriors to stand their ground and defend your side of the screen. They are one soldier and one archer. As mentioned, the unit stats will be shared later. Lastly, we have the health potion to restore the current health of the hero. Next, we have the pet power-ups. These are the power-ups near the top of the screen, which are a renewable resource. For the power-up to work, the pet has to stand on it. Each has a set of effects upon the hero. Firstly, the power power-up, represented by the sword icon. This power-up is intended to allow the hero to deal more damage, increase their speed by 60%, Shorten the time between normal attacks by nearly half and the time between cleave attacks by 25%. Next, represented by the horse icon is the power up, is the speed power up. This increases the hero's movement speed by 220%. Last 
but not least, the life power up. This is represented by the potion icon and it restores your hero to full health. Here are the unit stats as mentioned before. Uh, moving on, I'll be sharing with you some strategies to get past this arena. Firstly, it is, it is useful to have the pet always be standing on a power up as there is basically no reason not to do so. It could also be useful for the pet to be on the power power up so that Cleave recharges faster for the hero. This ensures that the hero does not get caught without Cleave. Try switching pet power ups for different scenarios. For example, power when you want to attack or life when the hero needs more durability in the fight. Um, we have come to the end of our presentation. If you have missed out on any of the information or would like to refer back to what was presented, we have prepared a document with everything shared today. Please scan this QR code to view it. We will also be sending you the link through the chat of this Zoom conference. Thank you and good luck. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, hi guys. Uh, my name is Kai Chin and I'm from Dunman High School. And I'll be the speaker in charge of Power Pick Arena. So, basically, uh, what I'll be doing right, um, is to just uh, recap what the previous speaker said and to teach you guys how to win this game. So, this is the table of contents. I'll start off with the brief intro. Uh, after that, I'll start with the objectives. After that, I'll do a live demonstration of how I would actually play the game. And the second last will be the hints. So some key strategies for you guys to gain more points. And last but not least, uh, it will be the conclusion where you guys can ask any questions. Yeah, so about the game, right? Um, as you can see here, uh, this is what the game would look like. Uh, this is just a zoom up version. So I'll be sharing with you uh, this thing. So this is actually the leaderboard. As you can see here, um, for me, I've uh, like ranked first because of I played a lot. Uh. So for those people who are more competitive, right? Uh, maybe you guys want to try to beat these people over here. Yeah. So ultimately, at the end of my speech, I'll just uh, show you guys how to win more points and gain an advantage over your opponents. Uh. Yeah. So back to the slides. Okay, so what are the objectives? So right, uh, you guys have to survive longer than your opponent to win and to use uh, effective combat strategies. So you guys have to do this like coding by coding with lines of uh, code in the Python language. Yeah. Okay, so this is the zoom up version. Um, okay, as you can see here, uh, the hero is over here. Uh, it's in, like, in the center of this uh, five circles. I will introduce what is that later on. So we'll start off by this brown color thing. I don't know whether you guys can see. Um, it's actually a bridge where the attackers come in. Um, not to worry, I'll introduce what the attackers uh, will be in the next few slides. Okay. So after that, uh, this circular thing right, um, is actually called a power disk. So in what we're supposed to do is to have this hero over here, like code it for this hero to stand on this power disk for it to activate the power. Uh, but you guys must keep in mind that um, this power disk can only be activated every 30 seconds. So you have to use it very wisely. Uh, after that, uh, you can see this uh, yellow pad. I don't know whether it's a cat or a dog, but yeah. So this pad right, uh, is to just accompany you uh, it will just help you get these powers when you code it to stand on this power disk also. Yeah. Okay, uh, just now I wanted to explain what are the attackers. So this is actually one of the powers uh, when you get to stand on this disk over here. It's actually a blue 10 icon, but the hero is actually covering it. Yeah, so what you actually do, do right, is to like summon two scouts and one thrower 
so that the attackers will come here. So basically, you code your hero over to stand over here. The attackers would come in over here to deal damage to your opponent. So when you deal damage and your opponent dies faster, right, you win. Okay, with that said, your opponent also can attack you and you have to defend also. So like one of the powers I will use right, personally, I'll use this uh, power, it's called Damage Or. It was covered by the previous speaker. Uh, it's also called the Fireball Icon. Uh. Like when you stand on it, it deals 100 damage to all the enemies. Yeah, so, so it's quite powerful. Okay, now is the live coding session where I will show you how to actually code this thing. So uh, when you log in, right, uh, you see this page and just click on this. I'll play as red. Uh, and for this button over here you, here, you can spectate other people playing as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll start off with the easy one. Okay, before I start, right, I'll introduce some buttons. Uh. So this was the screen I showed just time, my slides. It's basically uh, what happens. Uh. So on the right of the screen over here, you can see um, it's where you code your code uh, in Python. Okay, so uh, if you guys cannot remember what I said just now, remember there's this hint button over here and you can refer to like how to actually play this game. So these are some of the hero power-ups. And this is the pet power-ups. You guys can refer by yourself. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually my own code. I'll delete it for the moment. Okay, I'll start from scratch. Okay, so what I want to do right here, right? Uh, this is define pet logic. It's basically the code for my pet. Uh. So what I want to do is for my pet, move over here, over these three powers. And... How I would do that essentially is to just type pet and move. And I hover my cursor over the place I want it to be, which is 60 and 83. Yeah, so when I run, right, you guys can actually see my pet going over to the power disk. Then it says speed obtain. You actually get a power for me. Okay, now I'll code it for it to go to the next circle, which is 66 and 75. And the next one would be 54 and 74. Yeah, so you can see my pet moving in this triangular shape. Yeah, so a key tip, right? Um, if you guys have heard just now, uh, there's no reason for your pet to not move because nothing is dealing damage to it. It doesn't need to defend or attack. It just needs to keep moving in this uh, loop. So, yeah. Okay, so it just moves in this triangular shape. Actually, um, for it to repeat in a loop, I forgot to add a while true function. So this while true essentially just uh, lets it move in a loop. Okay, so now it's over the pad. You guys got any questions? If y'all got any questions, you can type in the chat also. If not, I'll just move on. Okay, so for my enemy code, right? Uh, this is my enemy code. I'll be sharing with you my own one. Uh. Like, so, okay, I'll start off with this line first. So what I'm doing here is uh, assigning the variable enemy to this uh, method called hero.findNearestEnemy. So what it does is this hero will find the nearest enemy and assign it to, to this variable called enemy. So over here, right, I got this if else function. So what it does, right? Um, is if there is an enemy and you check another uh, if again, whether the hero's cliff is ready. So if my hero's cliff is ready, 
I'll code it for it to move to 42 and 47, which is over here, this fireball function. Then I'll actually shoot itself to protect itself from the enemies and cleave the enemies. Uh, if the cleave is not ready, I'll just make it attack the enemy. If there's no enemy, I'll make it move to the attacking position, which is 38 and 31, which is this one over here. So, so that the troops can actually attack the enemy. So if you guys can see. Yeah, you actually cleave the enemies over here so that they, and I win. So it's quite simple. Uh. But as you move on to the harder levels, right? Um, the difficulty would obviously get harder. Uh. So you got to think different ways of how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so back to the slides. Okay, hints, uh, I mentioned just now, try to use your pet as much as possible. Um, this is a key strategy that I will use if I want to get more points. And also, you need to prioritize whether to defend or attack. Yeah, so maybe if there are, not, there are no enemies, you can just uh, keep on attacking the, the opponent. And if there are enemies, you try to think of a way to defend yourself as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Thank you, Kajing, and uh, for the sharing on the other arena just now. Now I'll be sharing on Wakama and also the tips on how you can beat the arena. I'll try to make this quick as Kajing has already mentioned most of the uh, how the arena actually looks like. And also Brenda has also explained some of the Wakama uh, necessities and also the items. So firstly, I'll be sharing on notes on Wakama and five things you need to know before you enter the arena. Secondly, entering the arena and the first law of arena and navigations. Thirdly, we yeah, are sorry. Thirdly, the tips and possible strategies and how to beat the level and win against the other players. And lastly, question and answer and also FAQ. So firstly, notes on Wakama. The objective of the arena is as mentioned by Brenda just now, to collect gems, summon troops, and also to defeat the opponent within 90 seconds without dying. The difficulty level is one out of four, which is the easiest among the four arenas. The Wakamo can be first assessed through reaching the last level of the introduction to computing science. And this is how the introduction to computing science will look like once you have completed all the levels within it. Upon completion against the bot for the first time, meaning that you have managed to win against a bot, the course will be completed, as you can see over here in the photo, and you will be able to replay all the levels again. But in order to access the Wakama Arena, click on the Play Arena. Now, entering the arena, and first look of the arena and navigations. As you can see over here, it is also stated that once you beat the computer that you can play against the other players, so during the actual day when you are competing against the other players, you have already been needed to have completed all the levels and reach the final level and complete the Wakama. This is a layout of the Wakama as also seen by Brenda's presentation just now. So at the top left hand corner is written the goals for the level, which I've also mentioned, defeat the enemy hero in 90 seconds. In competitive mode, you can also be an Augur. Secondly, your hero must survive, and it means that your hero cannot be less than zero health. The health can be seen at the bottom of the screen, and your hero will actually be attacked or by the troop summoned by the CPU or other players. You will start off with a base health of 200. On the top right-hand corner, you can access the hints or refresh the game from the top right-hand corner. On the right, this is how the uh, starting Look, looks like uh. so they have actually provided some comments and this still know of the hero dot attack g and hero dot say true. So what does the hero dot attack do and what does the hero dot say true do? 
uh, I'll be explaining in a short while. So uh, by assessing the hints, you'll be able to see these two things. So as I mentioned, by saying the unit names, you'll be able to summon different types of units. And by attacking, you'll be able to attack the doors, as you can see over here, the brown color ones. And you'll be able to break out your friends. For gems, the different type of gems that are lying around, as seen over here, each is worth a different amount of gold. For, for a single gem, it's only worth five gold. For a small pile, 15 gold. For a medium pile, 40 gold. And for a chest, 100 gold. Next, there's also a haste potion, as it will be in the middle of the map. And not only will you double with your movement speed, but I think there's a glitch or something, but the haste potion also gives you back your maximum health. So for example, you are left with 10 health, but if you collect the haste potion, you'll be back to 200 health. There will only be one, so please grab it before the opponent does. Next. Uh, on the ogre team, you can free the brawler. And on the human team, you can free the paladin. These are the stats for both the ogre and the pet, both the brawler and the paladin. These are the unit stats for the summoner humans and also the ogre units. Yeah, please take a look. Okay, so here is the summary of like the unit stats. So the red units are only obtainable when you are playing on the human team, which is the soldier, archer, and paladin. And the blue units are only obtainable when playing on the ogre team, which is thrower, scout, and brawler. Both the paladin and brawler cannot be summoned, and they must be released from their respective cages. So they're actually behind the doors, and you have to walk over specifically to uh, use the hero dot attack in order to break the door, and they'll be released. For soldier and archer, as you can see, they actually have a cost, and also for thrower and scout. So number three, tips and possible strategies. How do you beat the level and also win against the other players? So there are different types of methods and possible codes that you can use. Firstly, attack target. For example, hero dot attack G. So the letter G represents the door. So by attacking the door, you will be able to release the truth and get the potion as mentioned just now. Secondly, say message. So for example, hero dot say soldier. So you'll be able to summon two types of troops, soldier and archers. But lastly, for I in range X, where X is an integer. So this actually allows you to actually shorten your code and you don't have to keep on copying and pasting your code and it can actually make your code looks much more neater. This allows your actions to be repeated for a fixed number of times. So here are some tips and possible strategies available. Firstly, you can gather the gems, now that convert to gold and summon all of the troops at once in order to overrun the opponent. So for example, the opponent is actually walking towards you, then after you just summon all the troops all at once, your opponent will not have enough time to react to it. Secondly, you can also proceed to the right all the way in order to rescue the paladin and the troops first. So you have some troops before you actually st start summoning and you actually have a defense ready. Thirdly, you can, while going to the right, you can actually obtain the potion in order to speed up your collect to collect your gems faster and also like to regain any of your health loss and lastly because on the left of uh, where your character is right there are a lot of gems so you can actually go outwards to collect as many gems as possible before the opponent takes them because you can so remember that the opponent can also go to your side as you can go to his side so at the least of the possible strategies is not exhaustive and please come up with more strategies so other stuff include be careful not to over summon because for example, you only have 20 gold, but you actually summon your, for example, like a soldier three times, but you only have enough gold to summon them one time. And your hero will not move for like the two remaining times and you actually be wasting time. Huh? Secondly, find the shortest possible routes in order to prevent maneuvers and costing your, because like in this way, right, your opponent will be able to collect more gems than you and summon more troops than you and you actually lose. And lastly, think of the bots and think of the possible strategies to actually uh, overwhelm your opponent. 
So the sample solution here, please do not copy as it only has a 20% win rate, but it is actually the softest solution possible that I managed to come up with. Yeah, you can take a look at it. So as you can see from this, I actually only move a few steps, which is to move down, move right, not that move right more, then move out. Then after that, I attack the two to free out the paladin and the troops. Then after that, I just start summoning already. Although it works against the bot, but it does not really work against the real life players. So finally, after you have managed to complete the level, you'll then be able to start playing with all the real players and also compete against them. You're also able to stimulate the matches as seen over here. As uh, you'll be able to go to the main page and actually press on the button simulate match and they'll actually set out you and like some other players who completed this before and use that code and actually show whether you win or lose against them. So as you can see over here, I've simulated 980 matches. Yeah. So lastly, the Q&A and FAQ. So how do you decide between using Archer or Soldier for the troops, right? Depending on the strategy that you have chosen, for example, if you want to summon more troops and overwhelm your opponent, you should go for the Soldiers because they cost much lesser than the Archers. And you can actually like spam summon. But if you want to deal more damage, then you should go for Archer instead. And also like try to unlock the penalty as much as possible. Now ultimately you should weigh the truth pros and cons are, and also decide on your strategy or whether you want to go the safe way or like just immediately go and attack your opponent. So is there any questions for me? You can type it in the chat or like uh just unmute and see. Yeah. Yeah, if there are no any other questions, then thank you for listening.